I've been through more things than, than most of you will ever fucking be able to understand or know. I know what it's like to wonder whether or not when that door come up, are they going to let me out or are they going to blow my fucking brains out? Y'all niggas is soft. Y'all kids, you're fucking soft. You like to shoot up everybody and shoot up everything because you don't know how to fight. <clears throat> I wish a nigga would try me even right now. I wish a nigga would. I could use the practice. I'm serious. Life has been serious for me. Jaguar Wright had a vendetta against the music industry and everybody in it. She infamously talked about The Roots, Clive Davis, P. Diddy, Mary J. Blige, Jill Scott, Moni Love, and the list goes on and on. Jaguar had a story about everyone. No one was safe from her epic car rants and interviews. A lot of people questioned the validity of Jaguar's stories, but she knew the ins and outs of the industry. She worked at record labels and wrote music for different artists while also being an artist herself. So she had history in the business. It wasn't far-fetched that she had inside info on celebrities. And some of the stories she told were too detailed not to be true. Jaguar had nothing to lose. Her salacious stories grabbed the attention of popular YouTubers and bloggers everywhere, so she gained popularity quick. Everyone wanted the truth about the music business, and she was willing to tell it all. Jaguar always made a point to talk about the evilness in the music industry, and she exposed some very disturbing details about it. She alleged things like sex trafficking rings, abuse of power, sexual assault, record execs having artists killed because in that world you're worth more dead than alive. She tried her best to expose the dark side of the business and the puppet masters who pulled the strings. While many people are more familiar with Jaguar telling everybody's business, she's actually talented. Her voice is undeniable. She fit in perfectly with the Neo Soul era. She joined The Roots in 1998 and sung background for Jay-Z's Song Cry in 2001. Even though she had an amazing voice, she gained little traction for her music. It never got the mainstream success that she hoped for. Jaguar thought joining The Roots would help her make a name for herself, but things didn't work out the way that she expected. Her experience with The Roots was a bittersweet one. She was doing what she loved, but she didn't like the way she and other women were treated. Jaguar often said Roots members treated her like a second-class citizen, and she also allegedly had to deal with inappropriate sexual behavior from certain members in the group. She never spoke out about the treatment that she and other women went through because she thought that she would lose her spot, but she always regretted being silent. The gift that Jaguar was once known for was quickly overshadowed by all of the drama and negativity that she spewed. It was no longer about her career. It was about what she had to say next. Jaguar was bitter and scorned. And as much as she hated the music business, it was clear to see that she was jealous that she couldn't be a part of it anymore. Jaguar told many salacious stories about different artists that she knew personally and a lot that she didn't, especially her female counterparts. Jill Scott, Mary J, Erica Badu all have one thing in common. They are all highly successful in their careers. But in Jaguar's mind, they did something wrong to her, tried to copy her, or in some way took part in her not being successful. But Jaguar sabotaged her own career. She couldn't deal with the fact that she turned into another washed up artist that could barely get an album to chart, despite her being talented. Jaguar never had good intentions for exposing people in the industry. She didn't want to make it better for the next artist or stop the abuse of power from the higher ups. Envy and hate fuel her mission, and that's all. Jaguar could claim women's empowerment in one breath, and then, in the next, tear down the woman she wanted to so badly protect. Her message was contradictory from the beginning. It was obvious Jaguar had a one-sided beef with the whole music industry. Everyone was a villain in her storyline, but ironically, she blackballed herself. Jaguar talked about celebrities and trying to take down the industry for months and months. Her rants started to become obsessive. She was consumed with getting even with the people that she believed wronged her in some way. Jaguar was becoming unhinged. It was hard to watch. 
She would sit in her car with her husband for hours, yelling at her phone for the whole internet to see. A lot of YouTubers used her as clickbait for views, and it worked. People tuned in to see what she would say next, but it got to a point where people didn't want to hear about her celebrity stories anymore. We wanted to know about her. Jaguar infamously did an interview with Tasha K, and Tasha K, being Tasha K, asked the questions the viewers wanted to know. Jaguar didn't get a chance to control the conversation the way she normally did, and people wanted to know the nitty gritty. Jaguar talked about her mental health, her marriage, family, and her sexual assaults. It was really personal, and we finally had a chance to see how Jaguar became so jaded. But the more Tasha dug for answers, the more odd things became. Tasha K asked Jaguar was she homeless because she was always in her car and living in hotels. The answer that Jaguar gave was baffling. She went on to say that she was running from someone because she believed that they were trying to kill her. That someone was Clive Davis to be exact. The reason why Clive Davis would want to kill her was because she knew information on him that was very damaging to his reputation. I think it's highly unlikely that Clive Davis wanted to kill her or even cared if she existed, but in Jaguar's mind, it was true. That interview showed how mentally unwell she was, and if people didn't think she was unstable before the Tasha K interview, then they definitely thought it after. Karma was coming back to Jaguar tenfold for the way she exposed people, and now she was getting exposed. Jaguar often played up this victim mentality, but the only people that were victims were the people who unfortunately had anything to do with her. Everyone that she wronged started to come out about their experiences with her, including the women from her sexual abuse support group, WCW, that she created. Jaguar talked about this group a lot, and she was proud of the fact that she created a place women could go to talk about their experiences and get advice from other women. But according to women in the group, that was the furthest thing from the truth. The women of WCW quickly seen the other side of Jaguar, and they realized WCW wasn't something to help abuse victims. It was all about Jaguar's ego and her endless rants. The women never knew what Jaguar they would get. She disrespected group members and even threatened to put out footage of members talking about their abuse experiences for the world to see. One of the group members, LaShonda Quarter, became friends with Jaguar but she quickly realized how crazy and manipulative Jaguar could really be. Wow. I, I actually have a question. With the WCW situation, um, do you feel that she was um, also, in a sense, grooming the women who would be potential clients to sell them this holier-than-thou dream and then to use it as leverage in case they didn't want to participate? Absolutely, Ebony. It was it was kind of like um, cultish, you know. Um, yeah. But we a lot, were a lot of people are describing the behaviors within that group as cultish. We were keeping it from that dark area. We were keeping it, trying to keep it out of the gray area. But she would come and pull us in another direction, which is why we did have a little bit of um, opposition and division because she was she was she was the dividing force. LaShonda helped run WCW and she also paid for things needed in the group. They became friends quickly and Jaguar came to visit LaShonda. LaShonda alleged that things went downhill very quickly when she peeped Jaguar's game. Jaguar never had money to pay for food and other necessities so LaShonda trying to be a good friend paid for everything. And that's not even the worst part. Jaguar even tried to brainwash LaShonda's underage son telling him things like, you're the man of the house and you don't have to listen to your mother. She gave him cannabis and she even tried to keep in contact with her son after they stopped speaking. Obviously, this was the last straw for LaShonda. So she ended up filing a police report on Jaguar and Jaguar called CPS on LaShonda out of spite. Jaguar's crazy had no levels. Jaguar manipulated people close to her for her benefit, caused turmoil in their lives, and then gaslit them and called them crazy. But she didn't stop there. She even stole from her fans and people who wanted to support her by advertising melted down shea butter in a jar, 
Claiming that it had healing properties, fans would buy it, but she never shipped it, and the product didn't even have a working website, so her fans would cash up her money for something they never received. The narrative about Jaguar changed. Her crazy actions made everything she ever said questionable. No one believed anything she had to say. The YouTubers she gave interviews to didn't mess with her anymore because of the controversy and drama surrounding her. She was so manipulative that she even tried pitting YouTubers against each other. She burnt every bridge that she had. Then Surviving Jaguar Wright dropped and that put the last nail in the coffin. Everything that she was trying to hide came out for the world to see and it was worse than anybody imagined. Her own family spoke out about her just to show everyone her true character. It was alleged Jaguar took her diabetic mother's check, leaving her without not even enough to buy insulin for herself. Her ex-husband spoke out about her and talked about how unstable she was. Her own son didn't even have anything good to say about her. It makes you wonder, what does a person have to go through to end up like Jaguar? To totally manipulate, lie, steal, and cheat your way through life. You don't just end up that way for nothing. Karma doesn't play though. The surviving Jaguar Wright documentary finally put her over the edge, and she harassed Tasha K nonstop, threatening her legally and physically, calling CPS, and just being an overall troll. She couldn't do anything else. She lost. Jaguar finally had a taste of her own medicine but I doubt anyone was telling lies on her. The embarrassment must have hit hard because after a while, the trolling celebrity conspiracy theory videos stopped and she faded into the background. It was nothing left to say. She used every trick in the book to regain relevance and crashed and burned hard. The sad part about it is, is that she actually has talent, but she's so toxic, it's hard for anyone to take that part of her seriously. Now, I don't think Jaguar lied about everything that she said because we all know that Holly Weird is just that weird. It's a hard business to survive in and some people will sell their soul for a piece of fame. I just think Jaguar's delivery was all wrong and she went about the whole thing the wrong way. She didn't have to tell her story ranting in the car or in a bunch of interviews that she didn't get compensated for, but she did and we see how that went. If you went down the Jaguar rabbit hole, then you know she's an intriguing character that's been through a lot. Maybe one day she can get help, humble herself, and share her story the right way. But until then, she will always be the crazy chick that ranted about celebrities for a few months, got exposed, and then left. She deserved everything that she got, but her story still needs to be told. What do you guys think about Jaguar Wright? Do you believe some of the things she said about celebrities? I would love to hear everyone's opinion on this. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to Gossip Snob. Bye!